Greetings, creeps, and welcome to Four Girl Problems, the podcast. Thanks for listening, Mom and Nephew Noah. This week, it is just the sound of my voice, audio only, so we'll experiment with that and see how that goes. It is Giallo January, and I've been working my way through some Giallo goodness. Now, it's debatable whether this particular movie is a Giallo, but I finally watched it, and I loved it, and it's bonkers, so we're going to talk about it today. Of course, I'm referring to Dario Argento's 1985 classic, Phenomena. We've got a sleepwalking girl who can communicate with insects, a killer on the loose murdering young girls, and two seemingly very separate storylines. The young girl, Jennifer, is played by a young Jennifer Connelly. And you know, Argento is really seemingly a fan of girls abroad at boarding schools being picked off. Jennifer is an American, she's just arrived in Switzerland to attend a boarding school. At this point, we don't know if the boarding school is run by witches, but so far it's a very different tone from Suspiria, so probably not. So it's like Suspiria minus ballet plus bugs, witches to be determined. Jennifer is the daughter of an actor, and she's going to hang her dad's posters in her room, which seems weird. Her roommate is very excited about this, but the headmistress says this is a no-no and confiscates the poster. That headmistress, by the way, is Frau Bruchner, played by the amazing Daria Nicolodi. Jennifer tells her roommate not to fret as she has many more posters. Some people carry wallet-sized photos of their families. Jennifer plasters her walls with tiger heat and bop posters of her dad, to each their own. So as it turns out, Jennifer has a bit of a sleepwalking problem. And she always tends to be around at the worst possible time. Like when her classmates are getting shish-kebobbed and skewered through the face while breaking windows with their almost dead heads, chased by a black-gloved killer on school grounds. But she's asleep, so she's not a ton of help. It's also very fucking windy at this place, and it's an Argento film, so the girls are being chased and killed off to the likes of Goblin, and it's all very erratic and fantastic. This particular murder is the second murder, but the first murder that Jennifer is present for. And she sleepwalks right off a ledge, but luckily she's fine. Also, she has some confusing moments of being seemingly conscious, but apparently she's not and is actually still sleepwalking. Two young dudes in a convertible swoop her up, and they are fucking creeps. She fights them off as they paw at her, which they are not down with, so they dump her out of the speeding car onto the side of the road. This is where our seemingly unrelated stories begin to converge, though we may not know it yet. Luckily, she rolls down an embankment into the woods, where she meets a kindly chimpanzee, yes, I said chimpanzee, who leads her to the home of a nice old entomologist, Donald Pleasance in a wheelchair. And he's Scottish. All wonderful things. He gives her a dead girl's coat, his former assistant is missing, but they happen to be around the same size and age. Now Jennifer is on the scene and they become buggy buddies. The entomologist is an entomologist. He studies insects, which means he has lots of them on hand in his home for study. The chimpanzee is his caretaker and the bugs really like Jennifer, like really like her, which he takes note of. It's not mating season, but the bug peacocking all over Jennifer's hand pays that no mind. And it's widely noted that this is odd behavior, and the bug is trying clearly to impress her. It's sort of sweet. That substance is secreted by a gland. It, too, is is meant to attract a mate. You're exciting him, and he's doing his best to excite you. (laughs) And to think we only just met. Isn't the mating season? Can't understand it. Which I guess is code for the bug is horny for Jennifer, so that's something. Also, did I mention it's crazy windy here? Like, unsettlingly so. Jennifer has sleepwalked before back in the States, but not recently. She confides in the entomologist that maybe the trip out here triggered it. Maybe the wind triggered it. And then we get a very lovely little breakdown of this strange phenomenon as the camera does a slow zoom onto Donald Pleasance's very pleasant face. Maybe the wind. 
The wind, yes. The phone. Very particular wind. Typical of this part of the country. It comes from the Alps. The blasts of warm air cause snow avalanches. Make the flowers grow. The hatching of the larvae. Some people get headaches. When it blows, there are those who say it causes madness. It's a strange part of the country. The Swiss Transylvania. So welcome to the Swiss Transylvania. Is the wind driving Jennifer to madness? Most importantly, is the wind driving the killer to murderous madness? We don't really get an answer for that, but it's cool anyhow. Back at the school, Frau Bruckner is not pleased with Jennifer's sleepwalking habits. So a doctor's called in and Jennifer is hooked up to a crazy brain monitoring machine. Jennifer is not down with the brain machine, so she puts a call in to her dad's lawyer to get her the fuck out of here. But no dice, because it's Passover and he's on vacation. And we learn Jennifer is not Jewish, because when the person on the other end of the phone says, it's a holiday, Jennifer's like, a holiday? What holiday? Passover? Now some of the girls at the school start to bully her a bit for sleepwalking, which seems like a very weird thing to bully someone for, but most bullies have no real motive other than the fact that they're assholes, I guess, right? So classmates begin to bully her, but not her roommate. She is a nice French girl who promises to watch over Jennifer that night and thwart any sleepwalking attempts. But instead, she goes out to meet her boyfriend, as one does, leaving Jennifer in the room alone and breaking her promise. Which is a real shame. Her boyfriend's kind of a dick and he leaves pretty quickly, leaving the nice French roommate alone in the very windy woods where she is now naturally chased by the killer to an awesome soundtrack. Luckily or unluckily, Jennifer sleepwalks again right to the scene of the crime, where she takes a black glove from a bush and goes back inside the school, where she apparently wakes up and screams bloody murder. Now this glove is covered in disgusting little maggot larvae. The headmistress has warned the police against believing anything Jennifer says, so she takes her buggy glove and heads to the entomologist for help. The insects at his place go nuts for her again, where he explains to her that insects can be slightly telepathic. It's perfectly normal for insects to be slightly telepathic. Yeah, it's normal for insects. But am I normal? The girls back at the school are now majorly bullying Jennifer, so she pulls some carry level shit and summons a fuck ton of flies to swarm outside the building, as that wild wind is also blowing through the inside of the building, so she has some real fire starter vibes going on with her hair until she passes out from the effort of all the insect telepathy, which I guess can be pretty draining. Back to the entomologist, her only friend, where we learn the larvae covered glove is likely because the killer likes to keep in close proximity to his victims. And then the entomologist has a suggestion. The bug scientist sets Jennifer out in pursuit of the killer justice for her roommate and justice for his former assistant who was also a bug girl but not in a telekinetic way and has gone missing presumed dead. So now the murder storyline and the bug telekinesis storyline truly converge in the form of the two greatest detectives, a girl and a fly. As Donald Pleasance the entomologist puts it, to call on the services of the two greatest detectives ever known, or should I say unknown until now. Who are they? You and him. The him in question is the great sarcophagus, Jennifer and a fly, a girl and a fly. That fly is your magic wand, he tells her. It can detect dead bodies. So the girl and the dead body detecting bug board a bus and hopes the fly will lead her to a pile of corpses and thus the killer. Because remember the maggot larvae, close proximity, yes. The two greatest as of yet unknown detectives. And now I really want to see the spin-off series about the girl and the fly out on the town solving murders, very film noir style. Cadaver dogs are played out, give me the corpse fly. So now we start to get even twistier, maybe dare I say even weirder, but I don't want to spoil any surprises here. So here's just a few, we'll call them notable moments. So there's a strange, 
ex exciting, strange, exciting bit when the chimpanzee nurse finds a switchblade in a trash can. The movie goes from 1 to 15 within a single scene, and it does that multiple times towards the end of the movie. So the pacing is just like, whoa, 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 whoa. So you're really, at this point, just being bounced around with like crazy shit after crazy shit after crazy shit. It will be very quiet and unassuming, then BAM! This wonderfully spastic, anxiety-driving electric guitar that would lend itself to a high-octane chase scene, but it's just Jennifer Connelly like crawling around crawl spaces and navigating an escape. There is a very disgusting scene involving a putrid pit that maybe made me actually gag a little bit once or twice. The actual ending of this I never could have guessed. I would liken it to something here and reference a well-known movie, but that would just tip you off far too much, so I will keep that to myself. And then there's actually a jump scare that made me reach my hand out to the TV for some reason. It was like very dramatic. I don't know what I was reaching for, but I gasped. My hand dramatically shot out, but I guess that's better than clutching at my heart or clutching my pearls. Just me frozen with my hand extended and my fingers spread out. Like I said, very, very dramatic. Lots and lots and lots of exposition in the ending bit here, uh, because how the fuck else would we know what's going on and why? And then, BAM! Chimpanzee with a switchblade pays off. Chekhov's gun and all that. And it ends with a kiss. This movie is weird, wild, erratic. Uh, I guess some would say erotic with the sexy bug stuff, I guess. The pacing is crazy. The editing is very abrupt at times. Um, of course, Jennifer Connelly, Donald Pleasance, Daria Nicolodi are amazing here. The wind and the music in particular become very unsettling characters of their own. There are some very creepy, super fun elements going on in the third act in particular. Early on in the movie, we get a good amount of gore and uh, it doesn't disappoint at the ending. So we have like these little book ending sandwiches of gory goodness. There are three different cuts of this film. We have the uncensored version, another version cut for German and British audiences, and the US R-rated version, also called the Creepers version. Creepers was the original US title for this one. The US title is missing about 30 minutes of the movie, cutting out some of the gore, but it mostly sounds like it's edited for time as it's missing weird shots or trims down frames here and there to like just save time. Arrow Video released a 4K Blu-ray with all three versions of the movie, including the 116 minute Italian cut featuring roughly six minutes of footage for which English audio does not exist. So for those portions of the movie, the hybrid track reverts to Italian audio with English subtitles. The international 110 minute version is currently streaming on Shudder. That's the version with the 30 minutes that were cut from Creepers put back in and that is the version that I watched. So there you have it, Dario Argento's Phenomena, and I have to say, it was in fact quite phenomenal. If you've never given this one a watch, check it out, because really, it's just fucking... This, this was a weird one, and I say that in the most complimentary way, like it was just fucking wild, weird, wacky, bonkers fun. And I mean, I feel like I told you about a lot of the weird stuff, but as much of the weird stuff as I've given you, I have not in any way spoiled it. There's so much more weirdness awaiting you. So check it out. As always, thank you so much for listening. Please share this with the creeps in your life if you think that they would enjoy this. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Always appreciated and super helpful. You can find me at whoregirlproblems.com with a link to all of my socials there. I love getting to hear from you creeps. Um, new shop is launched. You can find that at horrorgirlproblems.com. Little link on the top shop. And that's all I got. I'll catch you creeps next week for some more spooky shit.